Welcome back into the film room. I am your host, Eric Turner. Today, I'm joined by Nate Geary. What's going on, Nate? Nothing, man. Just getting blocked on Twitter by Mike Silver. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, you were worthy of a block there, but you did get your punch in before he uh, he muted you out. Um, but uh, I know you want to talk about that fight, and we, you know, we, we <laughs> the Bills really didn't put up much of a fight against no. uh, Big Brother and uh, this past weekend in the Patriots. So we want to jump into the film room, take a look at uh, Josh Allen and how he fared versus Bill Belichick in that uh, Patriots defense. Let's start with. Uh, how you felt about the game, how Josh Allen handled that stage. Yeah, the eye in the sky doesn't lie is what uh, I think every single college and high school coach has ever said. Uh, and it still rings true to this day. Uh, it, it, I'll tell you, the, the film doesn't do Josh Allen a lot, of, uh, a lot of favors, but either did his play on Sunday, except for that final drive where he throws a touchdown to Zay Jones, covers the spread, and I won $225. Other than that, <laughs> it was a pretty difficult day for Josh, uh, all in all. But I also think there was a lot of opportunities left out on the field, um, not only by Josh, but by his receivers, who really did him no favors at all on Sunday. And again, I, I think it comes down to their lack of running game and their ability to um, to have a dual threat. Listen, I think we all know this in the league that teams that run the ball tend to run play action better and we know just how um, effective Josh Allen can be in the play action game and unfortunately again with no real uh, resemblance of a, of a running game just from the backfield in general from your running backs um, it's, it's hard to establish a, a, a good play action game if, if you can't scare a defense or you can't get those linebackers to take the first step forward and um, I, I think that's going to obviously as we continue on for this last week and, and into the offseason it'll be a priority for this team to, to figure figure out the, the running game woes that happened this year in the first year under Brian Dable and get that set up and, and, and I think made a little bit better next year in 2019. And I think that you'll see, um, I think you'll see an influx of new offensive linemen that will help the running game. But uh, today's are, are th what we're going to go over here today and, and what we saw on Sunday is a good example of uh, how not having an NFL running game can really, really hurt your rookie quarterback. Yeah, I mean, Allen, a rookie quarterback going against a Bill Belichick defense in Foxborough. Should have I mean, known, we, right? We, yeah, we, we should have expected this. And um, there were more bad times than good times um, against uh, Bill Belichick this past weekend for Allen. Um, but, yeah, I mean, not having the weapons. I mean, depending on what outlet you go to or however you want to grade it, there were three to four drops by guys, um, on, you know, especially early in the game, you know, the McKenzie drop. Uh, Foster, you know, you had a drop uh, towards the uh, end zone there against Gilmore. I mean, Logan Thomas. I mean, depending on how you grade it and how you want to look at it, he didn't get much help when he needed help. And we're going to go over a bunch of plays here where um, I think that it shows how the stage was a, maybe a little too big for Allen. He was kind of pressing it. And you'll see it uh, with his processing and you'll see how it trickles down uh, through his mechanics and how it led to uh, some missed throws, some inaccurate throws. And and in, in the NFL, that's the difference between, you know, getting a first down and getting sent off the field and having to punt. So uh, with that said, we're going to start early in the game, Nate. We have a third and six situation, and this is a play where Belichick really fooled Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. So you have Zay Jones coming across the field here, and they're trying to ID the coverage. And with that corner uh, following him, it looks like man coverage, right? But what we're going to see here is the Bills are going to throw a little high-low concept versus what what ends up being cover three here, Nate? And so it's not man coverage. Bill Belichick shows him man, but it's actually his own coverage. And what happens here post-snap is that, um, for me, initially, my uh, problem with this play is if this is actual zone, if he reads it as zone, he's probably going to hit this vertical route right here down the seam, wide open. But it shows how bad uh, his processing is on this play and how Belichick you know, fooled him here because they'll run a little, um, basically two little slants to the top of the screen. And now Allen has to throw in a tight window and you know, it just, it's, it's not there for him. And um, it, it's, it goes incomplete. He throws it into the turf and the bills have to punt here. And, and I want to show you from the tight camera angle, Nate, and talk about, uh, you know, Allen's uh, read here and you know, his, his mechanics and his fundamentals. Yeah. First of all, the all game that really bothered me, the, the camera here, it, it, the lighting at that stadium is terrible for one o'clock games. It's probably why they never play one o'clock games. But yeah, you know, I think if he identifies and you can see here, though, uh, where unfortunately the ball goes into the dirt. Right. But I think you were spot on when you said um, that he identified this as man coverage. Had he identified it properly? And if, even if you rewind it a little bit um, to the other view, the side of the, the coach and the broadcast angle there, mm -hmm. what you can see very last minute is the Patriots defensive backs 
show their hand right before the snap of the ball. And you basically see it. You see Gilmore in that corner sort of bail out right away, and they open their hips towards the quarterback. That should really be an identifier that, hey, this is a cover three. And especially if you look at the linebackers, this isn't a man-to-man situation with the linebackers. They're dropping into their cover three zones. And you're totally right. Had he identified that this was going to be a cover three right before the snap of the ball, I think he probably looks right knowing that that slot player um, is going to have to seem wide open and all he has to do is beat that safety over the top and yeah. a throw right there. I mean, and, and quite honestly, I think the receiver does a nice job of running away from the safety and towards the numbers and sort of stretches out that route a little bit instead of staying on the hash he goes right. back to he goes back to the numbers and I think that's obviously the play here this could have been a huge play early in the game on third down um, that not only converts but maybe you have a receiver who's going the distance on that play so again this just goes for me into recognition and what teams and what defenses and what a coordinator or a defensive play caller like Bill Belichick can do to rookie quarterbacks is give you a look hey this is man coverage we've got this uh, we've got this corner following and, and mirroring across the field. Yeah. In most cases, you're going to see McCourty pop out, and you're going to see that corner on the other side. That, and, and it just didn't happen that way. So he's thinking man coverage right off the bat. And I don't blame him for thinking that. Sure. Uh, but, uh, again, this is going to be something that I think maybe goes in the back of Allen's mind for the future. And this, uh, you talked about it, I think, in, in a tweet earlier. This game was a learning experience, and it's plays like this um, that, that really probably harp in on that, that learning experience, exactly what you were talking about. Yeah, I mean, even with the eye in the sky, it's hard to tell pre-snap. I mean, yes, that guy is following him. And then you also see, you know, you got your tight end here and who's right over him. He's stacked over, a safety Mm -hmm. stacked right over him. So, I mean, everything reads as man coverage. But, you know, as the ball snapped, you'll see the double A gaps drop out. And my issue here is his footwork. And um, I don't know if he's initially looking to try to get the ball to the tight end here across the middle. But in the end, you'll see him, he'll separate his hand from the ball. And that's usually the beginning of a delivery process. So right there, it looks like he wants to throw it. I don't know if he's actually looking to get it to him or try to throw it in this window, which if you're throwing to the backside slant here and, 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 you know, a quasi tosser concept in the New England Patriots system, uh, it has to be anticipated, which it looks like he's separating as if he wants to throw in this window, but he doesn't. And so then that obviously throws off uh, his footwork. And now he's waiting. He's already separated from the ball. Now he's waiting. His footwork's not totally aligned. And he's trying to hit the receiver in the secondary window. And when Josh Allen does that, he just loses some of his mechanics, loses some of his timing. And it, you know, it usually leads to bad throws like this. And this is not even close. It's not close. And quite honestly, he did have the window. But I think what it goes to is you're totally right. It's the footwork on this play. And he's just not he's not in a ready position to make an accurate throw. And I think what what goes into a throw like this, too, is if you're going to throw it, you've got to throw it. You've got to give your player a chance. And not only that, I think you have to understand what the defense and how to beat this this sort of defense with your throwing uh, or with it with your ball here right like you don't want to throw this at the dirt you want to put a little air on to try to get it over the linebackers not even that he really needs to right because he's got the window throw here yeah, but it's it. just really all in all from our mechanics to lower body mechanics um to the read it's all pretty rookie-ish right like this this is a rookie type mistake that you're going to probably see again from josh allen whether it's this week or early in the next season uh, but this is something that at least he understands that he can't throw it in that very first window and he allows Zay jones to get to the second window however he's got to make a more accurate throw um, and give his receiver an opportunity to make this catch yeah I mean if you're going to hold the ball a little too long if you're fooled pre to post snap which he was here fine but at least you know you got to at least complete this pass or give your receiver a shot even if it's low give him a shot because this is low and he maybe he's trying to protect himself from that safety who's under a little under 10 yards away Uh, okay you can make the case he was trying to protect him here but no I mean throw it low and somewhere he can dive and save himself you know this is just an inaccurate pass uh, from from beginning to end and uh, honestly it's not surprising given Bill Belichick's MO and with that said we're gonna move on to a second play and it's a similar similar throw you have a you know a tosser concept but this time off an RPO and he does a good job here it's very similar where he he kind of wants to throw it to this uh, tight end right here in the slot but that window's closed because they're in man coverage and got to have receivers that can separate um, if you're going to be running RPOs because uh, you know the number one uh, stopper is going to man and, and pressing and so he doesn't 
throw it here to the slant, that initial slant to Kroom. I think that's where he wants to go. If you remember against the Texans, he ran it twice. First time he threw it into the, into the turf, the second time he completed it. Very similar play here, little different coverage, more press than um, having Matthew uh, in off coverage. But okay, yeah. he doesn't throw it to that first guy. That's fine, but watch him reset. He throws it to the backside slant, which is just, it was money here. And uh, Nate, talk about uh, what you like on this play from his you know mechanic standpoint, and you'll see it when I slow it down because it's really pretty. It's predetermined, so he's not reading a conflict defender. He knows he has man. You have a rat defender in the middle field here. So he's not going to throw across the middle, but look at him reset his feet to the outside slant and then deliver. That's the part that really impressed me here. It, it's the reset to get to the next route, right? Like he at first, he does want to, you're right. I think he had initially maybe recognizes Kroom on this play as a guy that he wants to throw to, but it's a good job of recognizing leverage because he understands that you're going to be throwing into that linebacker if you throw the ball to Kroom on this play. So it's, it's essentially in effect, just to, it's not as effective as a pump fake, but his lower body in essence is showing a pump fake here. He's, he's showing the defender that he wants to throw to that, that early slant. He does a nice job of resetting though. And again, uh, which is not similar to the previous play where he really does a nice jo job resetting the lower body and getting the mechanics in a proper position to make an accurate throw. And he does that on the slant here. And, you know, these are the types of throws that he's definitely shown the ability to over or under throw or not throw yeah. this ball accurately. But when everything is working in sync for Allen, and, and what I mean by that is, is all of the mechanics in his mind, so when his lower body, his arm, and his brain are all working coterminously, then that's when you get throws like this and decisions like this that are accurate on time um, and thrown in the right place to have his running or have his wide receiver catch this and still be able to turn up field with it. This is a great play all in all, um, but it starts with great mechanics and it also starts with an understanding of why he's not going to throw that first round, even though he shows early there that it's something that he looked at. Yeah, I, I like this play and throw from Allen. That was, you know, it's later in the game, but um, just putting this play side by side with that previous play really shows you how important his mechanics are because as you said this is not a throw he's really good at and it's not something they call a lot of because of that they minimize these play calls but you know uh, Dable is reaching in the playbook here runs a little predetermined R RPO Allen just does a good job as you said resetting his feet and getting it to the backside slant which normally is not um, a throw that is made by a quarterback so let's move on to the next play uh, it's in the first quarter still second and ten and the Bills come out in uh, 12 personnel and they align the twins, uh, twin set to the bottom of the screen, Nate. And this is just a play. Uh, you heard Arians kind of refer to it in the broadcast about taking the easy throw, getting it out there, having your playmakers make the plays for you. It's a spot concept versus cover three. And Allen just blows by an easy throw to LaShawn McCoy early in this play. And this is a concept, Nate. He's skilled. He's mastered this concept in college and at the NFL level. But he's looking to push it down the field as the Patriots come into a cover three defense. He's looking to push it to this corner route because that's who Josh Allen is, right? Mm -hmm. But um, it's it's really taken away good spacing by a linebacker getting underneath on this spot concept or spot route down the field. Then you got Gilmore uh, eventually, you know, squeezing this route to the corner by Zay Jones with the safety help over the top. But Allen looks to LaShawn McCoy in, on this swing route to the flats and he puts his body in position to throw it. But he doesn't throw it, Nate. So talk about what you see here. Obviously, he pulls the ball down and, and scrambles, but um, it's something that we saw a lot of in this game, right? We did. And and this play specifically to LaShawn McCoy, two or three times, he hesitates to make the throw. In a couple of instances, he actually completes the throw to McCoy, but it's too late. And he throws the ball and the defender has time to get over to the top and defend McCoy. And on this play, this is not only a first down, but th this is a big play waiting to happen if the ball's out right there. The ball needs to come out right there. And that's an easy throw. That's a five to seven yard throw across your body. We know that a couple of times, and, and this is what I wonder with Allen, is if, you know, I, I think he does a great job of not listening or not hearing the criticism, but this is a throw I think he knows he sometimes struggles with. And this can be an embarrassing type of play if you yeah. miss that throw. I don't want to say that in the midst of a game, that's in the back of his mind. But at the same time, that's a throw that needs to be made right on the third step. This should be a first down and a new set of downs for this offense to continue. Instead, they get themselves in a third down situation, which you, as a rookie quarterback, do not want to get in third down situations against right. Bill Belichick. Yeah, and this is an easy way to combat that. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. And if you know you want to keep it simple, um, they're obviously showing a single high set. If you look at some of the posture here, um, obviously you have a safety on you know this receiver right here. So it's it's not showing his man, but regardless, okay, post snap, you gotta find that flats defender. And who's that flats defender in this look? It's gonna be this safety right here. To the other side, you're gonna probably have this guy with this guy dropping out, right? So find your flats defender, and that defender immediately drops and undercuts the one here, and he's getting depth. So, and, and you see Allen, his eyes are on him. That's what he I don't understand. It, right, yeah. He sees it, but he just doesn't trust that throw. And you see him, uh, he hits the top of the drop, but, and it's ugly because watch him bounce. One, two, see, one, two, three. I mean, he's bouncing a few times when the ball should be out. I mean, the ball should be out. And he's kind of bailing out of that pocket here with that, that rushers coming on him and closing in on him. And the ball should have been out by now. And, and McCoy has some green here. Some so. daylight, yeah. yeah and yeah, the, so. the thing too, Eric, is like, give me that one-on-one -on -one matchup between Hightower and LaShawn McCoy 10 times out of 10. Um, because not only, even if it's late, even if he decides right here, he still wants to throw the ball. And now it's a 12-yard throw. Yeah. Fine, get him the ball. And he's still likely going to fall forward to get a first down on this play. It's just understanding. And, and this people and, and myself included want to talk about well what's happened to LaShawn McCoy why isn't he getting the ball in space or why isn't he able to make the make the plays that he's been that we're accustomed to him making and it really starts with opportunity I yep. mean how many touches did LaShawn McCoy in this game with under 10 under 15 touches so like these are plays this is something so easy so elementary that you need to get the ball in your some of your playmakers hands to let them do their thing and on this play if, if you're Brian Dable you are circling you're going back to this play and you're watching this play four or five times you see Donta Hightower backpedal and bail out of that that right there should tell you you have plenty of room now Patrick Chung does the same thing you mentioned Patrick Chung bailing out to try to get over the top of the number one wide receiver or the number two I think in the corner on that play but to get in his zone and Hightower does the same thing this play everything from the start of the snap to the end of the snap tells you where to go on this play and he just, I don't know if it's just a refusal, but right here, the ball should just be out and yeah. float it out to him. And give him, a, you don't have to put any mustard on this throw, just loft it up, give, give McCoy an opportunity to go get the ball and go make a play. And, and it's disappointing, but these are the sorts of plays that can easily, easily be remedied in the film room. And I'm sure if we're noticing it, so did Brian Dable. Yeah, no doubt about it. And you referenced uh, the other time that they actually did complete this. And we're going to go look at that right now. It's a different concept. It's a flood concept on second and nine uh, midway through the second quarter. And so you're going to have a flood concept. You're going to have a deep route by the number one. You're going to have a intermediate out by the number two. And then just that swing three. All right. And it's just a play that, um, yes, Allen did complete this. But you'll see he is second guessing himself. And it's, it's basically the same coverage. Watch Patrick Chung. Watch Dante Hightower and how they uh, they both, you'll see Hightower open to the field. You see Chung bail under the one and the ball should be coming out right now, but he double clutches and then throws it. And what that does is watch Hightower swing his hips. He's, he swings his hips to the field initially, and then he has to swing his hips back outside and the ball's coming late. He has time now to get the proper angle to go get McCoy. And it cost McCoy a first down because I think if this ball is on time, thrown on schedule, McCoy's getting that first down. He's absolutely getting that first down. And again, this kind of just goes into understanding why you're getting that ball out quickly. And of course, this is a little bit of different play because you're coming from under center. Um, like it's not exactly the easiest play to, to drop back in a four or in a five, three to five step drop, turn to the left and make this throw. That's not the is as easy as you might think it is, but still right here, the ball should be out. And you have 10 yards in between the defender and LaShawn McCoy with the ball in his hands. I don't care if that defender's Troy Palomalu. I love the odds of having LaShawn McCoy in space. And to be honest with you, I think LaShawn does it. I don't like how he cuts to try to cut this back inside. If he just continues towards the sidelines, um, instead of making that pivot move to try to uh, almost like a shimmy move inside, I think he should have just gone for the first down marker. But that's, you know, that's another conversation in this play. You can't wait on these types of balls. You need to get the ball out quick and accurately. Um, and, and he just doesn't do that on this play. And he makes this a harder throw than it needs to be, much like the last play, where if you throw this within the first five yards, this is an easy one, two, three, throw, get the ball out of your hands and let LaShawn McCoy do his thing. And, and you know, I think this is going to be something that, that McCoy, I'm sure, was in Allen's ear about on the sidelines and after the games and in the film room. But these are the types of play that you're just making it harder than it needs to be. This is, these are easy concepts to understand. Yeah. Um, and it's not that he doesn't understand it. He does. He sees it. He does. But I think the timing is just off.
Yeah, no doubt. And you'll see once he hits the top of his drop, he bounces, bounce, bounce, and then throws it. And by the time he hits the back foot, his body should be in position to throw to that side of the field because they're keeping both these tight ends on the other side in the block. So it is a three-man half field read for him. And as soon as that back foot hits, his body should be in position, which it is, to make that throw. But see, <laughs> that little pump fake right there, that costs yardage. And it costs uh, Shady McCoy a first down here. But again, his processing pre to post snap was good here. And you saw him you know, sort of learn from uh, the first uh, attempt at this play. But he's got to just throw it on schedule and give his guy a shot here. All right, so the Bills are down 7 0 8, first and 10, end of the first quarter. And we have uh, a Josh Allen moment, right? He air mails this uh, on a Haas concept. To the top of the screen, you're going to have McKenzie running just a, a deep hitch uh, right near the sticks. And uh, we're going to look at this play and we're going to look at a completion uh, on a very similar concept towards the end of the game. But we'll start with this, Nate. And uh, it looks like they're showing man coverage across the board. And to me, in my opinion, this game, Dable, I think, tried to make things easier for Josh Allen and gave him more half-field reads, more predetermined reads. Hey, if you get man coverage, work this side. If you get zone coverage, work that side. I think he's trying to actually target uh, the slot fade here, which is a uh, tight end uh, versus a linebacker here. And I think he gets caught in between reads here. Wanting to throw that, and as that slot fade develops, you're going to see that corner kind of soften up and help that deep route and deter that throw. And then Allen gets caught in between both those reads, and he ends up trying to throw it late uh, to this hitch to McKenzie. And, of course, it, he air mails it, right, Nate? Yeah, he tries to arm throw it because I think all of his mechanics, all of his body said, I want that slot fade. And you can see it right here. I think he's decided that he wants to hit that slot fade. He doesn't. So he doesn't really let himself, like the previous play that we just showed, uh, or I'm thinking the RPO slant, where he resets after already making the decision that no, that slot, in that case, the slant, in this case, the, the fade in the slot wasn't there. And he, the reason that you're going to see him float this is look at the arm mechanics from right here at this angle. Like great quarterbacks have, are going to have a difficulty making this throw. Tom Brady is going to have a difficulty making it. Patrick Mahomes, even the greater armed quarterbacks, when your feet are telling you to do one thing and your mind is telling you to do the other, it's hard to overcome those mechanics. This specific concept is supposed to occupy the middle of the field and occupy those linebackers and open up the numbers, open up that potential outside throw on this play. He ultimately makes the right throw, but it's such a poorly placed football. All you have to do is get this to his chest and let Isaiah McKenzie fall forward. And if it's not a first down, it's close to it. And you're yeah. living to see another play. Uh, but this goes into one of those Josh Allen's terrible throw or with the the Josh Allen Wyoming throw, you know, and, and yeah. that's going to go into somebody's archives so that they can tweet it out for the rest of his career. Um, but I, like on this play, and, and you'll see the the next, it's the same play concept, same. Um, that Haas concept with the two inside tails, uh, the pigtail routes, which I, I, I do love that concept because I think it occupies the middle of the field and makes it easier for your rookie quarterback um, to either go from inside to out. Um, or if you, that outside receiver isn't open, you come back to the inside and you should have some leverage um, on the inside. But on this play, he makes the right read. He's far more decisive and far more accurate with the throw, getting it to keep forward on this play. And, and you see, and, and I think that you, you'll cut this up in a second to show how this play differs from the one we just saw in the previous play and why it's successful and why the other one wasn't. Yeah, same exact play as you mentioned. Later in the game, he's way more decisive, and you'll see it uh, just not from his reads or the throw, but you'll see it from his feet from another angle. So same same exact play, honestly, almost the same exact coverage. You see the, the corner kind of sits soft there. And then, you know, from the left hash, this is the other thing. From the left hash on both of these plays, he's making that throw across the field. And we're going to take a look at it from the tight camera angle here. All right, Nate, so I, I cut up both of these throws that we talked about. The first one that obviously he airmailed to McKenzie, and then the second one that he nailed uh, right on the hands of Keith Ford. And the one to the top of the screen, actual completion to Ford, uh, very decisive. And one of the things that I, I noticed is, is you, you watch the, the drop from the left hash, uh, the footwork and where his stance is is very similar. So it's, it matches up really well, and, and you get to look at the drop because uh, to the top of the screen, you're going to watch his feet, and he's going to he's gonna drop a full yard, almost a, a full yard, uh, shorter uh, on that throw to Keith Ford. So, um, and, and you see it there. You see him kind of uh, set with that right foot, hit the back foot in between the two hash marks there, whereas in the bottom of the screen, when I let it roll a little bit further, you'll see him, he'll hit the actual uh, hash mark right there. 
Okay, so it's a deeper drop on the one that he was trying to throw that slot fade and then, you know, second guesses and ends up trying to throw it to McKenzie late. Um, so it's at least a, a, probably about a yard um, further on that throw. But the other thing is look at the shoulders, look at the hips, uh, look at the decisiveness shown in the body posture and throw of Allen on the top and, and to Allen on the bottom. I mean, he hits the top of the drop and he's, he's slightly hitching and then he's getting rid of the ball. Whereas in the bottom, He's kind of hesitating, waiting for that develop, you know, that route to develop. And obviously the throw, um, the shoulders, the footwork is not there. And he's, it's more of an arm throw, right, Nate? It's more of an arm throw. And he also, I don't know why he tries to take something off of this instead of just putting it in there. But you're totally right. Like, look at the decisive nature of the top play. This is the same play against the same coverage. And look at the decisiveness up top compared to the bottom. I mean, it's almost a full click second um that that ball comes out it might even be more than a full second yeah that, that ball comes out on the bottom comparatively to the top and my thought is on this play is after the bottom play what i think probably happened is is josh allen went over to the sidelines and him and dable are together on the surface pro and he probably said when we run this play again later in the football game and we get that same covered do not hesitate throw that out pattern and in this instance it happened to be keith ford and and not isaiah mckenzie um, but you could just see, I mean, you're totally right too on the depth of this drop. He wanted, and you could see too where his body starts. His body starts far more narrow. He's aimed inside to that slot, um, to the tight end going on that fade. On the other one, he's already made up his mind where he's throwing. You could tell he's setting his body up to make that throw. And he's just not doing that on the bottom of the screen. So um, it definitely was probably more of a premeditated read than, than the first play was. But again, I, I think this kind of goes into being a rookie quarterback and having a good coach on the sidelines coach you up that if you're getting the same look, this is where you want to be. And I even made an argument on that first play that Robert Foster was open backside, but he never really made it back to the backside. And, and I think that's fine. I think if you're going to cut this off, you need to make the right play. But I also think you have to make an accurate throw when he does that in the second play. Yeah, it, it just goes to show where the processing from pre to post snap, if it's not on for Allen, his mechanics are going to struggle and that could improve with reps i mean there's no doubt about it you can improve that with reps but you can almost feel him thinking here he's thinking too much he's trying too hard whereas in the top one he's just decisive he, he sees the coverage knows the coverage and he's getting his body in position to throw whereas in the bottom one he's kind of murky whether he wants to throw the slot fade versus that one-on-one -on -one matchup versus a linebacker um so then his body's in position to throw that slot fade and then he's like oh man i'm gonna throw it to that hitch or that comeback to McKenzie, but my feet aren't in position to make the throw. So I thought that was kind of cool to, you know, splice up and take a look at it from that angle because it goes to show, you know, how important that pre to post snap processing is and the mechanics uh, when it involves Josh Allen because that's obviously something that he's going to have to continue to work on, Nate. Yeah, and, and listen, I mean, this is something we already knew that he had struggles with at times, right? Yeah. And it's that consistency. But listen, the, the good news is, is when he's shown the decisiveness, when he's shown that the lower body matches his brain and his upper body and his throwing mechanics, that the ball comes out and they are NFL throws. They're pretty. They look like every other rookie quarterback when they look good. He's got that. So at least like on, like on plays like this, in, in a one game, you see that he learned from his prior mistake, made a more decisive throw. And I, I just don't really understand the thought process, though, on, on maybe taking something off that throw to McKenzie, other than maybe he had already dropped one that he that he buzzed in and, and a couple of previous plays. But I don't know. I, throw the football in there. You know, be you. And, and I said this during the game is I, I think he started to worry towards the end of the game. And on this play and the interception in particular, that he throws uh, where he just lofts the football up. And he's yeah. done that before. And I think what happens is in his mind, he starts to see a couple of his receivers drop his throws that he's making. And my thought process behind that is, don't you dare change you. They'll get guys around you that can, that can catch your throws. Yeah. Don't change you, especially this young. You have to do you. And if, you're, if your receiver's going to drop the ball, they'll find somebody that'll catch it. And that's what I mean by, you know, he's thinking too much. He's overthinking it. He's indecisive because, you know, when that receiver showed late and McKenzie and he airmailed it, watch that back foot. We always talk about that trail foot. Watch the top one, how he follows through. You see it hit down right there. Now watch the bottom one. Here comes the throw. Now watch, see that little hitch, that little, he doesn't follow through all the way. He, he drags it on the turf. So he leaves uh, some of the uh, velocity off that throw because he's throwing it all with arm. He needs to follow through there. And you could argue with maybe it's because Mills uh, is getting beat and there's an, a rusher in his face, but he still has room to follow through here. And I think if he follows through, maybe it's not as accurate, but it'll have a little more velocity. And at the very least, it'll be 
um, it'll be lower. The ball won't sail over his head. That's usually when a ball sails, it's because a, a quarterback doesn't follow through with that trail foot. And we saw it here um, on this play. So, all right, Nate, we move on to later in the game. We're in the second quarter. This is Josh Allen's interception uh, where he kind of uh, uh, floats it a little too much. The corner makes a play on it. We're going to take it from the top where we show you the coverage. Uh, it's first and 10. And I'm going to show you the play, uh, the defensive coverage out of the backfield. The Bills are running a spot concept out of a bunch set. And the defense um, aligns in what they call a stab and combo versus a bunch. It's a common check in the Bill Belichick system. Uh, it's something the Bills actually run too. And what that means is the nickel corner that is on the point man here, right here, is going to be a man coverage. So he's going to take wh whoever is there. He's going to take a man for man. And then the other two DBs are going to combo coverage or pattern match the other two receivers right here and so it's a common coverage that you see a lot and uh it's something that Allen hasn't seen a lot of this year uh typically we've seen that box coverage we've broken that down a few times uh but we're gonna see the actual concept here and how the defense is supposed to match it so the number one wide receiver is running that spot route it's like a slant stop uh you're gonna have uh Deontay Thompson running that deep corner you're gonna have the tight end going to the flats here so you'll see the man coverage uh, on the Y here. Uh, you're going to have the man coverage there. Uh, and then the other two DBs are going to match their uh, route concepts. And honestly, Nate, I, I like uh, where Allen's head is on this play. And you see it here. I like where his head is on this spot concept. But um, I think it's thrown off. The play is thrown off by the really good press coverage by this uh, cornerback right there. He throws the play off and jams him pretty much his entire release. Uh, jams him, throws the play off. And you'll see the other DBs do a good job of matching these routes here. Um, you're going to see uh, them match it up pretty good. But the timing of this play is off, which allows this corner to kind of soft bail and make the interception here. So, Nate, from the top, uh, what do you like about this play? What don't you like? What happened here? So, again, the concept is something that we, we know Josh Allen understands and likes throwing. Um, that corner route is something that he throws something he throws really well. On this play, he just gets no help at all from Deontay Thompson, who just absolutely gets throttled at the line of scrimmage and taken off the stem of his route. And what that does as well, him getting owned at the line of scrimmage, throws off the spacing of this play. And really where you'd like, you'd like Deontay Thompson cutting to the cutting to the corner as your you know, as your curl route on there is cutting for their pattern. But unfortunately, the timing of both routes get a little thrown off on this play. And you could make the case that maybe Josh Allen with his arm strength should have just taken that spot route. Uh, what is it? You know, two, three yards, four yards down the down the field right there. And is that Isaiah McKenzie on that play or is that Zay Jones? That's Zay. It's Zay Jones. So on this play, you'd maybe like to see him fire it to, to the sidelines um, away from that Patrick, away from Patrick Chung. Um, at least understanding that that outside defender who actually ends up making the interception on the play is likely going to not be in position to be able to come over and make the interception if he throws it right away hard into the left or to the right shoulder pad. Right. But I think he still makes, I think, the right decision. It's just not the right throw. And I, I honestly, I don't know what would have been running through his head in this instance that made him think that he's just going to kind of loft it. He way under threw it too. Like it was a bad throw, but I don't mind the decision making here on the corner route. Had he thrown it correctly and just thrown it to the sidelines, there's no way that corner is able to really get over the top considering he bails right as the ball's being thrown, right where you're showing there. Yeah. If Deontay Thompson can get over the top there, he has the ability to beat that safety. And I just don't think that corner's got enough speed and athleticism to defend this play. Even if he can, it'll likely be defended and it won't be interception. I, I just, I don't understand the thought process on this throw and why it was thrown the way it was. Um, but I do like at least his progression of why he's making this throw. Just let, let's put it simply. He got zero help from his, from his wide receivers on this play, um, getting absolutely owned at the point of attack. But you have to make a better throw than that. You have to understand that if you have a cornerback who's reading your eyes and you're staring down that corner route that you cannot put one up you can't put a buddy pass up there and allow him to make an easy play on this uh, on this interception and that's what he does he just put throws a buddy pass up there and uh, it's easily picked up by the defender yeah I mean he does a good job he scans to his right initially which is fine I don't think it's really meaning anything it just meant to you know kind of hold that safety when he hits the top of the drop you see him put his body in position boom flips his hips to where he wants to throw it so 
you know, as a quarterback, you got to understand when you do that, when you commit that, especially a guy like him that has to have his base under him to make these throws to the out, you know, to the outside the numbers or whatnot. Um, he's got to understand that guys are going to be keying on him. And that's what that corner does here. So it's a good job of getting his hips around there. But because the, the, the receiver is having to work through this jam here and it throws the timing of this play off, um, you see Allen still scanning and looking at these routes out here. Uh, it, it just, he was staring at it too long. And then, like you said, I like the decision, but the trajectory and the throw here is not a good throw. And I, I agree. I think there's a case to be made that if he, um, you know, hits the top of the drop, gets his hips around and makes that throw to the boundary up the field. Uh, I think that this play has a shot. He's got to throw him open though. Um, and he doesn't, he, uh, hangs the ball up and the ball's intercepted. But I think it's one of those plays where the receivers didn't help him out. The timing of the play was off. Uh, his mechanics were kind of off. Is and, and he was staring the play down with his eyes. And, uh, you know, this is the NFL, and those plays are going to be picked off. All right, Nate, third and seven, fourth quarter, uh, 11.39 on the clock. Um, the Bills uh, send out a uh, three-by-one bunch set. The Patriots, again, run the very same stack combo coverage. But this time, uh, you'll see it highlighted there at the top right of the screen. The Bills run this exact play pretty much. They run a follow concept. And in my opinion, I think once you see the film and uh, let it roll, you'll see this little uh, route, the follow route by uh, McKenzie, I do think is open versus this coverage. Instead, we'll see uh, Allen work uh, the uh, isolation route to the back uh, end of the formation. So I think on this play, Nate, I think Allen was kind of fooled on the coverage. Why? I don't know. I think it's, it's basically the same exact coverage as you saw earlier. You see the uh, stab or man coverage by the point uh, versus the point man here. And then you see the other two DBs matching those routes. And you'll see the number one wide receiver right here uh, coming across the middle. He's going to pull that defender. And then you're going to have the follow concept of McKenzie. And I think if Allen reads this correctly, if if he understands that it's the same coverage as earlier on this third and seven play, I think this is where the ball should go. But he doesn't. And that's fine, Nate. OK, you know, you're going to struggle pre to post snap when you have Josh Allen, the rookie quarterback versus Bill Belichick. He wants to go the isolation route. He wants to go to one of his favorite receivers. And that's fine with the ball just inside the right hash. He has the ability to still make this throw. And right, Nate, I mean, he has the ability to throw it to this outside shoulder, even though he read it incorrectly, throw it to this outside shoulder with his arm strength to make that throw there. Right, Nate? Yeah, there are very few quarterbacks that can make a mistake like uh, and listen, it is it a, an egregious error? No. But he just has to he has to throw this play with conviction and he makes the read that he wants to go backside on the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Well, and he, everything in his mechanics show that he had determined that right here. Right here that was determined that he was going to make that throw. Have some conviction on this play. Put it stick it. You you do what you do best, which is Throw, throw guys open with your velocity. Throw guys open with your arm strength. Throw this to the le to the left shoulder towards the sidelines. Let your wide receivers square up. Potentially make one guy miss, and he's off to the races. There aren't a yep. lot of guys that are going to trail Robert Foster and catch him in a, in a foot race. So, uh, this play, you're right. I like obviously that that trail or that follow technique uh, coming back on Isaiah McKenzie is probably the ideal throw in this play, but. He determined that he wanted to hit Robert Foster. So do it. Don't hold up. Don't exactly. stop yourself mid motion um, and decide that that's no longer the play that you want to throw. Because at the end of the day, this ends up going as an incompletion when it could have been at least um, if it wasn't a first down, at least he's making that catch at the 15 yard line and maybe he can fall forward for a first down. But if you don't make that throw and now you're throwing for a much lower percentage falling away, um, it just turns out to be a, a negative play when it could have had at least some sort of positivity to it. Yeah, again, pre to post snap processing was just off here. Uh, typically, uh, this bunch formation, this concept from this bunch formation is a really good uh, zone beater, especially when you're talking cover three with that single high set. So um, I think he was just fooled a little bit. But again, he's got the arm strength to make up for it. He could still make this throw on the backside, but he just he's indecisive. Uh, he doesn't make the throw. The pocket pushes into his face. And now he's just throwing a, a really low completion ball. And a really, um, I don't want to say it's a dangerous play, but, I mean, you got two guys over there uh, with a shot at that ball and a guy who really has no separation in Zay Jones. And we'll see it from the tight camera angle. Again, he looks, he looks, you know, to the bunch side, but you can tell that he it's more of a glance. He's not planning on actually throwing it there. He's, I think he... Um, thought he had man coverage here. So he goes to the isolation route, which is fine. Throw it though. 
your body's in position, you're in rhythm, you hit the back of your uh, your drop and just throw it. You're, you're in good position to throw it, just throw it. You don't have the conviction here. Now you want to try to work the backside? That's how interceptions happen. And yep. it's probably good good thing he didn't throw it to McKenzie here because I think that defensive back's probably going to make a play on the ball. Um, so he pushes back and just kind of throws it deep there. So um, again, I think he was kind of fooled here. But either way, if you're decisive, make those mistakes. You know, make that throw. Be who you are, as you said. Be who you are and make that throw. Even if it isn't completed, at least uh, you have conviction in your mistake. Right, and that's something that you that most quarterbacks, coaches, most offensive coordinators will tell you, especially as a young player. If you're going to make a mistake, make it 100%. Make it with conviction. And on this play, he makes a mistake, but then he realizes it or he thinks about it right as he's about to release. I mean, that is just close to the ball coming out without it actually coming out, as you're going to see, right? Like, he's halfway cocked to throw that football, and he just decides last minute that it's a bad decision that he wants to look backside. You're right. This is how mistakes, these are how interceptions are thrown when you when you make a mistake, and then you think in the, in the course of a play that you can cock it back in and look backside when the when the structure of the play has already passed, you know? Um, and on this, he can't really get out of the pocket because of the, the ownage that's happening at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, on this play, just, just make the throw that you read. You read it for a reason. You felt comfortable about it for a reason. Just complete the play and move on. Yeah, no doubt about it. Again, just he was fooled, man. I mean, Belichick had his number this game, especially on third down. All right, Nate. Now we're going back to the first quarter. We're going to cover a couple plays that we actually liked. They, now, they weren't completed, but they showed Allen's thinking, his mental processing pre to post snap. And, and honestly, even some of his footwork and, and uh, location on some of these throws were really good. So we'll start with the Robert Foster play where he throws it deep to Foster. Obviously, Foster lost it in the sun and honestly could have been a big play. It's second and 14. Uh, Bills are down seven to nothing. And you're going to see the concept here. Bills are in an empty set, 11 personnel. And you see right there, Allen is alerting. He's checking uh, to the deep shot. And why is he doing that? He's doing that because he thinks it's cover zero. Now, the Pats don't play cover zero, but why does he think that? Because you see this safety uh -huh. stacked over the tight end here. Um, I mean, who's covering this tight end? Is it going to be this edge defender, this edge rusher? Is it going to be Dante Hightower? Either way, you see the one-on-ones across the board. You see a stacked defender, a stacked safety like that. It smells of pressure. It smells of cover zero. So he checks. He alerts to that deep shot. And you're going to see Foster kind of stem this route inside versus Gilmore. Get Gilmore to kind of commit to that divider rule right there. And then he just launches it deep and Foster's blown by him. But uh, Foster loses it in the sun. So talk about this play from beginning and Nate, what you like uh, uh, from Allen uh, pre to post snap and honestly the location of the throw. I don't love the location. Um, I, I, on this, what you don't want to do is throw this back into the safety, right? And it's a little inside for, for my liking. I, where I'd like this ball to be is over the top, allowing him to run under. And I think you maybe mitigate some of the issues with the sun, which honestly too, he's ru running through a shadow. So he's got sunlight, shadow, sunlight. And I can tell you from a receiver standpoint, that's a really difficult thing to do yeah. when you're running full speed. Be like, as your eyes are adjusting to looking back at the sun to then have the shade and then have it to adjust back to the sun. That's a really difficult thing for a wide receiver um, to do on this play. But I would have loved this to be closer to the sidelines, even if it brings them out of bounds a little bit. I think I'm fine with that. It's a little inside, but it's not a bad throw. Like this is a ball that he probably should have had. But if you look at the leverage of the wide receiver, uh, that's carrying him towards the sideline more than it is carrying him towards the safety. You just always want to make sure you're, that you're not leading your wide receiver back into the safety or back into the defenders. Um, so it's not terrible. It's not ideal, but it's also, it's just, it's not a bad play all in all. It's unfortunate, I think more than anything, um, that that the impediment there, that, that extra shade or shadow yeah. um, in the field of play, I think really messes up Robert Woods. And he signaled, I remember watching it live, like he signaled right away, like I'm, you know, basically my bad. I couldn't see that ball at all in the air. Yeah, as soon as the ball was in the air, he lost it. And I think uh, part of the issue with um, maybe where the throw was placed is uh, Foster blows by him. He stacks the defender there, but you see he's not really giving Allen too much space to work this boundary. Typically you want like, what, three yards or so, uh, that red line, that imaginary red line. So I think that's uh, really where Allen threw. I think he threw it down the red line um, as opposed to towards the boundary. So I don't think there was um, much uh, area for him to throw it uh, down the sideline. So I think that's why he kind of left it inside on the red line. But either way, 
um, he made a really good call. You'll see, um, you'll see the alert call here as the uh, Patriots are actually checking coverages. And again, it looks like man coverage. It looks like they may be bringing pressure. And uh, you see the uh, safety right here, uh, you know, again, capping that uh, defender uh, up ahead of him. So it looks like cover zero, but either way, um, there's, it's, it's going to be a, a very tall task for McCourty to get from the middle of the field there um, to the other side of the, the field um, on this throw, especially down the field. And, and Foster just had him beat, man. It's just, this is a big play, especially early on. I mean, uh, this is a, a, a game-changing play that we've seen when Allen has been on. This is a confidence builder. I mean, I think Allen was one for seven on throws over 20 yards. These are these are throws and plays that really help catapult Allen and, and gain confidence um, early in the game, right? Especially in the first half. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's unfortunate, too, because being as early as this was, a play like this could totally change the outcourse of a game. It could totally change the confidence of a quarterback, especially a young one. When you complete a play like this against a Bill Belichick defense, against their top corner, a guy who's going to the Pro Bowl, like, that's just, this is this is an unfortunate play when it comes down to it. Like, there's really nothing other than the elements that really impede this throw. It's not a bad throw. It's not a bad route. It's not covered. Um, there wasn't uh, poor blocking on the play. Everything set, set up perfect for a big play for the Bills here. And unfortunately, just kind of like how the season has gone, um, it, it was just unable to be completed. The final play here, Nate, and this is one of those plays that, you know, Allen does everything right. But McKenzie drops the ball over the middle, and it, mm. it's a third and five situation here early in the game. So we have another empty set here, right, Nate? And it's it's a play that they've run a lot, especially in third and medium, and it's just that Chip Kelly mesh concept, and they get the zone coverage that they want. Uh, appears to be some variation of cover three, and it's it's honestly um, really murky pre, as, a, as a pre-snap read because you see there's only one down lineman. I think the Patriots called this their playground look where they're, you know, that amoeba defense where guys are just moving all around and once the ball is snapped, then they drop to their areas of responsibility. Uh, but in the end, it's three deep and they get the four underneath. And the read from Allen is it's money. Uh, to the bottom of the screen, you're going to have him, uh, instead of the running back out of the backfield, running that wheel or rail route, just running just a go route or a fade route. And that's the first read. And so he looks to him quickly and realizes that um, that, that wheel route right there is not there. So... Over the middle, you have that mesh concept. If it's man coverage, that's where he wants to go with the ball. But it's not, right, Nate? They, mm -hmm. they drop into cover three, and he hits the exact guy they needs to. And Isaiah McKenzie versus cover three, right in the hole, right over the ball, right exactly where he should be. Reads it perfectly on time, throw, uh, pretty good placement, but McKenzie drops it. So talk about this play and how Allen read it um, and what you thought about the throw. Love the timing. Uh, again, I also love the empty set, which, again, they, they just keep running and, and keep allowing Allen to see the full side of the field. And on this play, it, the mesh does exactly what it's supposed to do against his own, which is conflict the defenders or or keep the defenders' eyes in front of them long enough to have that hole in the, in the middle of the field open up. And it, literally, the, the play call works to perfection against the zone. And you're right, like if this is a, this works, this play anyways, this concept should work against man or zone because that mesh concept should open up things nicely against man or it should conflict the defenders well enough in a zone, which it does to open, to open up. things yep. up for, for McKenzie. McKenzie has to make this play. McKenzie's had a very good, solid couple weeks since coming over from Denver's practice squad, but this is a play that you need to have. You simply cannot let your rookie quarterback down on a play like this where he makes the right read he makes the he makes a great throw on this like the 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 ball placement on this throw is is exactly where you need to see it and unlike a similar style concept against the defense earlier that we saw with Zay Jones where he just throws it in the dirt in the second window this is a perfectly placed football with perfect accuracy and perfect mechanics you can't waste these types of plays, especially on third down inside your own 20, because now you're putting your punter who's already not great as yeah. it is. You're putting him in a difficult position, kicking from the shadows of his own goalposts. Even if this, this drive doesn't end up with a touchdown or a point scored, at least you're not kicking from inside your own 20. And, and even if you think about it from that aspect of things, you just need your, your guys to go out and make plays. And I mentioned this earlier when we were talking about a play that Josh Allen cannot go move away from what he does well and what he thinks he does well. And you can't take anything off this ball. You need to just get people in the position that can make the catch or make the plays when your quarterback makes the right read. I mean, this is anticipatory, okay? Like he's throwing the football before he makes, he stops. And that's what you want to see from Josh. 
and he makes the play. You just need help from your teammates, and he didn't get it on this play. Yeah, no doubt about it. And it's, I mean, look at this. This is a tough read, not for just Allen, but the offensive line. I mean, there's only one down lineman. You see everyone moving around, and you see them cross. You see these two defenders cross and drop to their areas. I mean, this is a tough read when you think about it. Create a post snap for the offensive line and for Allen, and you know it sorts out really nicely. You see um, the the mesh coming across the middle, and you see how that widens or, or spreads those defenders out horizontally. Uh, you see how Patrick Chung is kind of in conflict here uh, with these crossing routes in front of him. You see McKenzie sneak behind him. You see Allen with his feet and, and base uh, in good position with pressure in his base um, as uh, Van Noy beats Wyatt Teller. Uh, it, it just you got to have these plays, especially early in the game. We talk about building his confidence. I think uh, those issues at the beginning of the game, um, it really, really hurt his confidence um, in, in that first half. And I know he did pick it up in the second half, but I think the stage was already set for what type of game Allen was going to have early. And I think that's what Dable has done a good job of uh, this season when Allen has played. is getting him started early, whether it's you know plays that fit to his strengths or plays that, you know, give him the ability to just pull it down and run make it you know let him take a hit and get his head into the game and i think early on his receivers let him down and uh it trickled down throughout the game all right Nate, so obviously the bills lose to the patriots something that's not new to bills fans but i want to talk about uh what your overall thoughts on this week 16 matchup um and what you expect from Allen going forward because this was one of his probably is one of his worst games uh, on the season i think this was behind green bay i kind of yeah, yeah. John from uh, AAP on that. I think this was the second worst game um, I, just because I think that um, Belichick really just tried um, confusing him post snap, pre to post snap and, and his processing. I don't think he had an opportunity to use his legs uh, to extend plays. So talk about what you expect from uh, Josh Allen and maybe is this a blueprint um, given the roster right now that maybe Miami can um, take into week 17? Yeah, you'd think. I, I, just, I don't think that Miami defensively in terms of talent, and, and I don't think New England is very talented in defense. They're just a very well-coached football team. Um, conversely, with Miami, both of those uh, aspects of their defense aren't there. They don't have the talent, and they're not a very well-coached defense. Right. So I, even if they were to try to you know emulate what they did um, against Allen this week with New England, and, and they were to try to use that same game plan, I, I don't know that they could execute it to the level that they did um, in this matchup, but I expect Allen to have, um, listen, I think Allen's pretty confident going up against this Miami Dolphins defense, um, considering that he had his best game as a pro and maybe the best game, uh, out of any rookies throwing the football, um, other than maybe, uh, the, the, the previous week, uh, week 16's, uh, performance by Baker Mayfield, uh, right. was right up there, but you're right. This matchup, I think, or, or, or this game was probably his second worst game. I definitely am putting that green Bay as, as by far his worst, uh, his worst game as a pro, but again, something to build off of. And, and you know, Bill Belichick's not going to be around forever. Um, and, and, and to think that, you know, Josh Allen is some sort of uh, anomaly that all this that, that, that Bill Belichick doesn't beat every single rookie he faces is phony. I mean, he's like 17 or 18 and one yeah, all nuts. the time against rookie quarterbacks. And, you know, you're, 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 you've got your work cut out for you anytime you're facing the, the goat of coaches. So. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I expect Josh Allen to grow from this performance, and, and I'm excited to see how he does round two against the Dolphins this time at home to close out the season. Yeah, no doubt about it. I agree with you. I don't think the Dolphins have the same amount um, of discipline that the Patriots showed versus Josh Allen. Uh, I think the, some of the matchups do work in the Bills' favor. Um, but, you know, second time around, it's it's nice to see how uh, the, the Dolphins or the opposing team is going to adjust and how they're going to defend Allen now. Um, given what they have on film, I, I thought this was, a, yes, it was his worst, uh, second worst game. Um, but I think it's it's one of those games where there's some really good coach film, right? There's some really good teach tape uh, when you look at this film. So, um, I, of course, I think there was more bad than good. Um, but I think that's going to go a long way um, in Josh Allen's development. I think this will be one of those games, along with that Green Bay game, that you know they'll look at in the offseason and say, Okay, as a coaching staff, what could we have done better? Uh, but as, as players, what could we have done better? And I think obviously Allen um, is going to look back, and I'm sure he already has, and, and thought, man, I missed some opportunities. I uh, was indecisive. I was fooled. But uh, maybe next time around, he's able to adjust to that. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this up. Nate, where can everyone find you on social media? At Nate Geary WGR, uh, I'm, uh, you can find me or uh, you can search under Mike Silver's dad uh, <laughs> and I will also pop up as well. So uh, yeah, you can check me out there. Last week, obviously, 
Uh, I will be uh, doing my normal stints at GR this week uh, with pregame, halftime, and postgame, and I'll actually be filling in for Jeremy next Monday on New Year's Eve uh, to talk about the game on the morning show, so you can check me out there. Awesome. Again, thanks, guys, for joining us in this film room. I'm your host, Eric Turner. That's Nate Geary. Thank you for tuning in to Cover One, the film room.